when you look at your strategy or, or your growth projections over the next two or three years, do you account for the trade war at all? You know, when we think about our business, Heidi, we're looking at consumers, we're looking at mothers um, around the world, but principally in China and, uh, and increasingly in the U.S. And, and, of course, in Australia, who are really passionate about providing the very best nutritional products for their children, uh, particularly uh, babies and young infants. And that seems for us, anyway, to, to override trade discussions happening in the background. Jane, you speak about clearly China is, is a massive market for A2. We've had you know, anecdotal reports that there's greater kind of uh, restrictions when it comes to taxation on certain consumer goods. We know that there's a new e-commerce law taking effect shortly. Are you concerned about the tightening regulations having an impact on your business? We're actually, we welcome, Heidi, the, the new regulations. We think it's a really important part of growing a healthy e-commerce sector for the long term. This is an important channel to Chinese consumers. Uh, we are uh, welcoming increased sophistication in the way the channel uh, manages itself. The new laws seek to add uh, basic protocols for e-commerce businesses and add some uh, protections for consumers, which we think are important and the right thing to do. So what are your expectations for market share in China and how big of a business will be this e-commerce uh, factor? We have a multi-channel strategy into China, Heidi, and it's a really important part of our strategy. We're providing products not only through e-commerce platforms, but also through um, the mother and baby stores in China, and increasingly will be a combination of physical and online, really designing a network of um, opportunities for mothers to access our infant nutritional products. And when we think about our market share potential, we're looking at the world of possibilities, and we see a lot that's positive. We have a very strong, loyal consumer following. The biggest driver behind our brand is word of mouth, as mothers talk to each other about the benefits they're seeing in their babies after consuming our infant formula and nutritional uh, products. Is it a concern of you that there has been speculation that Chinese authorities have been trying to crack down on some goods uh, going into China and sort of enforcing uh, the customs, uh, customs enforcement being strengthened? Would this be an issue for your company at all? No, we don't think so, Heidi, because what we've been doing quite successfully since our early days in infant uh, formula is working closely with the personal shopper network, which we know as the Daigos. We've been working mm. with them to improve their sophistication and put them in a position where they're ready for increased um, regulation and scrutiny. So they're, they're now in a position where they're quite sophisticated, they import through free trade zones, they pay tax, they go through normal customs procedures. So the vast majority of our revenue actually goes through very sophisticated processes into market and into the hands of mothers passionate about the very best for their babies. Jane, I have to ask, the stock took a dive when you sold off your entire stake in the company. What kind of signaling were you trying to make by doing that? Well, the, the important thing I think to understand, Heidi, is that um, I, I obviously left a previous employer and had quite a lot of shares tied up in, in my former uh, employer. And as is normal, you get a set of transition um, shares and bonuses to make you whole uh, to, the, to the closest extent possible as you migrate from one company to another. So that's normal. And, of course, you'd expect with shares that have been afoot for over three years in my former employer that I had um, earmarked those funds for, pre for investments, and that had been a previous commitment mm. uh, made prior to joining A2. And so, um, you know, what, what isn't clear to, um, to investors is that I still have, I've sold uh, what vested, which was already committed uh, for me in a combination of tax and, an, and a previous commitment, but I also have uh, more than twice that still in shares that are due to vest and, uh, and coming through in both a combination of transition and performance-based uh, shares. So my, my uh, personal motives are very mm. uh, inextricably linked to our shareholders. 